It is Monday, May 16th, 2022. This is another edition of Baseball Today presented to you by our friends over at Shady Rays. Go throw some Shady Rays on. Not only will they help you protect your eyes from the sun, you will look as cool as my man, Trevor Plouffe. I am Chris Rose. How you doing, dude? Good, good weekend other than your Little League loss? Oh my gosh, you're going to start with that? I'm just saying. I, you know, I thought maybe that's why you were late. You were talking to your baseball therapist. I don't know what you were doing. No, you know, I had a great weekend. Yes, tough loss for the D-backs, but we're still in it. It's a double elimination playoff bracket, so we got a we got a work cut out for us. But hey, man, that's that's when the fun starts. I'm all yeah. about the work, Chris. Totally, you, you're smart. You were, uh, you know, you were like Team uh, McFlurry Power in the um, in the Blitzball tournament, where they said, you know, we just wanted more airtime, so that's why we lost right out of the gate, so we could have the double elimination. It was, we're it nothing, work out we're great, nothing you know? like them. We're no, nothing no. like them. We're good point. We're professionals. We want to thank everybody for uh, joining us, whether that's on our YouTube page, whether it's in podcast form or live on the AMP app, where we'll be taking your questions and your comments coming up in just a few minutes. But let's get this thing going. I, I want to go off the rundown a little bit with the Sunday night game. My oldest son, it was a blowout, right? Giants Cardinals. And he goes, oh, my God, Pujols is pitching. I'm yes. like, what? what like how amazing is that if you're one of the two guys that ended up hitting a homer off of a dude who's got 600 plus homers it's it's crazy we're watching the video right now on it just lobbing the ball up there albert can you just give me a little speed on that thing or what dude dude he didn't I actually want to text blow him, out i texted longo afterwards and i was like what was that like facing Pujols? and you know you got a hit like how awesome is that he just was like blushing about it. he's like so cool like what a moment you know in a blowout game like that you know, if you're the giants like i guess you found a little bit of fun in the game you got to see this guy do his thing uh, it was a special game all around because it was also wayno and and yadi yeah. you know surpassing uh, it's for 203 team wins uh, during their start so the best battery in baseball mm-hmm. history according to that stat so it's kind of a cool game all around we've been seeing these games you know the angel game um that was crazy uh, that you got to see everything in one game. Same thing with this, like just a big blowout Goldschmidt, Arenado, Yachty, all doing it offensively. And then you get to see pools pitch at the end of the game. Pretty cool. Yeah. I loved how Longo asked for the baseball afterward. And that's yeah. smart. That's smart because he might be like the only guy ever from this point forward to get a hit off of a guy who had 600 homers. So Pretty cool, man, that ain't bad. That ain't bad. I love it. I love it. I just, yeah, I, I would keep that baseball. And, uh, you know, it was good to see Albert smiling and enjoying it. Like, right? It looks like he's never left there, doesn't it? Like, yeah, he just looks true. right in a Cardinals uniform. Yep. It's good. Like, you know, I saw him in a Dodgers uniform, and it, he just – it. I don't want to say he looked, like, almost, like, sloppy a little bit. But, like, in the Cardinals uniform, this guy looks locked in. I don't know what it is. Just It mm-hmm. just fits him right. Yeah, interesting. All right, uh, let's get uh, – speaking of the Dodgers, uh, they lost three of four at home to the hard-charging Phillies. So what was the biggest story to come out of that? Was it Bryce Har- Harper's weekend dominance? Uh, was it the fact that the Phillies' pen blew leads in three of the four games, including Sunday's finale in which it lost five to four? Because that's what a lot of people in Philadelphia are talking about today. You know, it's it's such a strange series for the Phillies because obviously you're feeling great about going into L.A. and you take three of four. But the way you had to do it was exhausting. Like, you're exhausted after that series. And, like, you don't even know, like, was that a good series? Yeah, we won three out of four. So I guess you have to take that away from it. Um, but knowing as an offense that you're just going to have to continue to put up runs throughout the game not just the beginning of the game but like one through nine you got to keep going that takes a toll uh, eventually you know I've been on teams where the pitching you know blew lots of leads for us and just puts a ton of pressure on your offense we knew that was kind of going to be the case anyway we liked the the Philly starting pitching we knew the defense wasn't going to be there but uh, for them to have to go out and do what they did to, to secure those victories I just think it's it's not as fun winning three out of four when you have to do it that way uh, five of seven on their road trip through Seattle and Los Angeles. Um, so we know all the demons of, of 
recent seasons past of the Phillies and their bullpen. I think last year they tied the major league record with 34 blown saves. The 04 Rockies, I think, had that number as well. And you have to remember that not every blown save counts as a loss, right? This weekend they had a couple of those pop up where they blew huge leads against the Dodgers, ended up winning the games, which, you know, for an offense, I know you said it puts a lot of pressure on them, but this team is built to score six runs a game. Not going to happen because teams don't average six runs a game, but that's how this team is built. And when Bryce Harper's doing what he's done, and I don't know if you've noticed, but over the last eight games, he didn't play Sunday because he got that uh, injection in his elbow. Over his last eight games, 16 for 31, four homers, 10 ribs. He's swinging the bat as well as whenever we've seen him swing the bat. Um, so I, I'm not, I wouldn't let it rain on my parade based on what you just accomplished over the last week on the West coast. Yeah. They're happy with the road trip. I'm just saying it's, it's, it's tiring to, as an offense to do that. Harper had eight hits in the series, Chris, seven for extra bases. That's, that's what I'm talking about right there. Hell that's yes. a nice series. Uh, and you know how much I, uh, <laughs> I know how much you love this portion of the program. So Philly does a great job on the road trip. They now come home. They, they're off today. It sounds like Harper will not play in the series opener against the Padres. Listen to this schedule over the next month. You ready? Padres, home against the Dodgers, at Atlanta, at the Mets, home against the Giants, home against the Angels, at Milwaukee, and then Arizona, who's no pushover these days. So the next month for this team, you're going to look, you, you told me over the phone on the, this weekend, this is the time of year where we find out what teams are all about. And I think we're going to know exactly what the Phillies are about one month from now. Yeah, I think it's for me, it's like the June, you know, beginning of June mark is where you see hitters, you see teams like, are you going to be for real? Uh, you're going to start to see teams who started out hot kind of come down and teams that started out slow kind of come up. It's it, it, The cream rises to the crop eventually. I, I, I think I've referenced this on the show before. I remember talking doesn't, to Prince Fielder. Doesn't the cream rise to the top? That's what I said. I think you said crop. I didn't say that. Hmm. Why are you all over me today? Listen, I'm trying to tell a story about Prince Fielder. I'm trying to remind people that I used to play professional baseball. I was at first base with Prince. And I'd gotten a few hits in the series, and he's like, hey, how you doing? I was like, ah, man, you know, just trying to trying to get those numbers looking better on the scoreboard. Because I told you, man, when you're struggling to begin the season, you keep seeing like a one or like a low two batting average. It hurts the soul a little bit. So I said that to Prince. He goes, you know what? He goes, I don't even look. I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, I don't look at any stats until the end of the year. He goes, I know if I put the work in, they're going to be there at the end of the year. And I don't do myself any favors by looking at them through the year. So I try to do that as much as I could because it made sense to me, like process, 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 forget about results. Uh, it's difficult to do it because obviously it's always in front of your face. Um, but that's kind of how I feel about the season too. Like no matter how you start slow or, or strong, like everything's going to come and be what it is supposed to be by the end of the season. I think this June is where we start to see it start to happen. You played against Prince Fielder. I love it. Good story. Yes. I like it. All right. So the Pirates, that is the team whose hat I am donning on this show today, became the sixth team since 1901 to get zero hits and still get a W. In fact, their manager, Derek Shelton, said afterward, hey, sometimes you win in weird ways, and today we won in a weird way. If it's part of history, that's fine because it's still a win. Do you agree? Of course. Of course. I mean, the Pirates know they're not going to go out there and score a bunch of runs. They're not the Phillies. Okay. Uh, interesting game. I mean, both pitchers were really good. Hunter Green, you know, when he has like a three pitch mix working, he's going to be really tough. I mean, this is not going to be the last time. I mean, I, they, they count it as a no hitter because only eight innings, no. right? Yeah, they don't count. Correct. No, no. It's not going to be the last time we see him flirting with a no hitter late in the game. That's he's 22 years old. He has the stuff that everyone dreams about having for him. It's about location and control. Um, uh, you know, I was, Curious to see him be allowed to kind of go that long. I know it's the most innings he's ever, or most pitches he's thrown in the game. Mm -hmm. Kind of happy. He's a big boy. I think he can handle it. Um, but the Pirates, you know, found the way to win. I thought that play at the end was kind of strange. Like Lopez had the ball. Like you kind of got to come get that and go home. Because uh, once you try to go to second base and then he kind of hesitated with that flip. I mean, that was it. You're gonna be you're gonna be down you're gonna be down a run. I think you got to come and try to get that run at home, but. Look, for the Pirates, any win you can get, you're happy with it. Absolutely. 
No, I thought it was uh, it was fun to check in on Hunter Green. 122 pitches, seven and a third. Interestingly, his pitch mix, he threw 65 sliders on Sunday, right? He had been fastball heavy throughout uh, for most of his starts so far. Decided to go, you know, more than half his pitches with sliders. Thought that was interesting. Also became the first um, team since the 08 Dodgers. I'm talking about the Pirates here to win without getting any hits against uh, the Angels. And the game started by Jared Weaver that day. I think he only went four innings that day. So, um, yeah, good for the Pirates. Whatever. They're trying to piece it together. It's It's been a tough road for them. Not compared to the Cincinnati Reds. But the Reds have been playing significantly better. It's just like, I can only imagine what the hell that clubhouse feels like afterward. Like, our kid, he ends up throwing no-hit ball into the eighth. We can't scratch across anything. And the dude ends up losing the game? The Reds are an enigma. Great young really talent though? on that team. They had they had the pieces there and just didn't do it. And Hey, shout out to Jose Quintana in that same game, seven shutty. Nobody talking well. about him. <laughs> By the way, he will he'll, he'll get trade if if he keeps it. He might not continue at this rate because he's he's had a couple of really good starts this year, um, but he'll get traded. He'll get somebody will take a, a chance on him, right? I mean, I know it's been several years since he's been good on a consistent basis, but left-handed, somewhere down the stretch, he could fit in, particularly with all the injuries that we've had around baseball. And one other thing. I think I look a little bit like Derek Shelton now that I've grown out the uh, salt and pepper beard today. He used to be on this like this commercial for some hitting contraption. Yes. What was it? Yes. The swing over? Um, no. Oh God, what was that thing? Yeah, I used to I used to crush him on. I was like, dude, are you getting royalties <laughs> was, on that? We were like, who the fuck is this guy on the on the TV? He's the only player in in major or the only person in major league baseball has like a, t- a commercial on tv it's like i know random right? hitting coach but yeah shout out shelty yeah. yeah it was like uh when uh fred mcgriff was doing the tom amansky videos there it is there Derek it is. shelton oh yeah let's see it i have we have oh one of these God. we have one of these no joke they better have paid him a lot of money for that that thing's a silly gadget the no, speed no hitter offense. that's what it was right yes look at there you go all Pull right your barrel shelty. out of the zone real quick <laughs> How about that kid, the left-handed swing? What did he do? Did he even move his legs? Did he even load at all? Oh, man. I got to say, you're better looking than Shelty, no doubt. Well, well, right there I am. I, I, it's just now the salt and pepper beard and the pirate's hat. We'll see. Well, today's episode of Baseball Today is presented to you by these guys, Shady Rays, which is changing the way you wear sunglasses in the outdoors. It's got the best combination of fit style and performance without the big brand price tag and here's what's the amazing thing about shady rays every pair is backed by lost and broken replacements i'm sure you're like me like one time i lost my shades in the ocean i was like oh they went in the water they're gone another time i'll put them down on my seat in the car i sit on them i break this part they're toast Well, guess what? With Shady Rays, if you lose or you break a pair, even on day one, they will send you a brand new pair. That's unbelievable. On top of that, you not only want to look good, you not only want to feel good, you want to fill your heart when you purchase something. And that's where Shady Rays takes the game to an entirely new level because they also provide 10 meals to fight hunger in America with every order. And so far, they've donated over 20 million meals to date. So you can look great in your shades and feel good about the impact that this company is making, which I love. And by the way, if you don't love these, you can exchange them for a new pair or return them for free within 30 days. All you have to do, go to ShadyRays.com, use the code TODAY for 50% off two plus pairs of premium polarized shades. Once again, that's ShadyRays.com, use the code TODAY for 50% off two plus pairs of premium polarized shades. I promise you, you look great. Interesting series gets started tonight. Cards and Mets out at City Field. It's the first time since the little brouhaha that we had in St. Louis. Mets players got dotted a lot. We had a ball thrown near Arenado. We had a little bit of an escalation. Will things be quiet or noisy? We got to talk to Stubby Clap. I mean, he's he's the kingmaker here. <laughs> like, if he's pissed off, we might have some fireworks. I don't know. I, I think it's going to be quiet unless I don't think anything's going to come 
you know, on purpose. But if we start seeing these balls get away from some pitchers, then, you know, there's definitely a chance that we see some fireworks happen. I'm hoping that doesn't um, because, you know, what, what does that do for either team? It doesn't do anything for either team to get a guy's thrown out or to get guys injured. So I'm hoping nothing happens. But like I said, if we get a few balls just kind of errantly thrown up and in, I mean, these teams have been feisty with each other. And I think Buck is fed up like with everything. And I don't know if he's at, at a certain point telling guys to go out there and, and, and have some retribution, but um, maybe, maybe it'll come to that. I'm hoping not though, Chris, I really hope it doesn't. So if I'm part of the SNY broadcast team tonight that, that covers the Mets game, when, uh, when Alonzo runs out of the field, onto the field, assuming he plays first base and Stubby Clapp, who's the first base coach for the card, I want to see their first reaction. Like that's the shot that I want to see. I want to see if they're keeping their distance. I want to see if Stubby Clapp comes up to him and is like, hey, dude, sorry, heat of the moment. I want to see if there's a handshake. I want to see if they'll get past this. Or I want to see if there's a deep freeze. Don't you? That's so good. Like the Stubby and Pete show. Like they should have, they sh- hopefully they got together and were like, <laughs> hey, dude, this is the thing. Let's have an argue, like a shouting match. Just let's get people fired up. Like this is going to be fake, but I'm going to start yelling at you. You start yelling at me. Like give me a flex or something like that. That's that's the entertainment we need in this league. Ooh, got a little WWE on the night of. Uh, I think we might Monday need to start Raw. bringing it in. Is that what we're doing here? Yeah, I think Dude, so. Al- Alonzo would be he would be a great baby face. He would he would he'd be a great face. If Stubby Clap and Pete Alonzo did a fake fight and like Alonzo stone cold stun stubby clap in the first base coach box. Like that's what we need. I'm on it. I'm on. I'd be, I'd be tuned in. I wouldn't miss a pitch. Are you kidding me? Oh. Uh, if once every game, we just had a wrestling match break out randomly. I think the ratings might go up. I don't know. Hey, we got to, we have to clip this off and send it to and tag SNY in our Twitter feed today. Please. <laughs> Please, when Alonzo runs out on the field tonight, follow him the entire way and then get a nice two shot of he and stubby clap. We've got to see what happens. We have to. If not, I mean, because SNY is one of the best local broadcasts around. The announcers are great. The crew does a great job. But if you don't do that, you have failed us. Yeah, because, I mean, the first, where are they playing? They're playing in New York. So, yeah, first inning, he's going to run out there. Stubby's going to be right there. Like, is it going to be automatic? Like, is it going to be like confrontation right away? Or do you think they're just going to ignore each other? Because usually you say, what's up to the coaches? Like, if I'm a third baseman, I go say, what's up to the third base coach, dap them up a little bit, at least chuck the deuces. I mean, is that going to happen or is it going to be a stalemate? Well, let me ask you this. So the Mets, they don't have to cross the diamond because their home dugout is first yeah. base. Won't Stubby be the second to arrive? Yeah, probably. Okay. But still, like, you – before you, the game, you say, what's up? It's pl- as a, give some pl- exchange pleasantries, you know, like you're right. SNY, like get on that. Like let's focus go. right on that. We need to see the interaction here and hopefully it ends with a stone cold stunner. Woo. I'm in, I'm in. <laughs> hey, Shohei with another huge weekend out in Oakland, which included career home run number 100. So he joins Babe Ruth as the only players with at least a hundred homers and 250 strikeouts as a pitcher. When it's all said and done, will Shohei, A, hit at least 350 homers, B, record at least 1,500 strikeouts, C, do both, or D, do neither? Dude, you sent me this question, and I was like, there's way too many numbers here. I can't. (laughs) There's only two numbers. My mind was just in a fog, okay? So let me just do the hit. Yeah. I think he gets the 350 homers. I really do. I mean, that's, so what's that, you know, 250 more, like the guy's going to play for a long time. He's got that type of power. I think he gets to that. Now the strikeouts thing, I couldn't even do the math on that. So you can answer that for me. I have no, no idea, but I do think he gets to 350 homers because we talked about it. This guy has real deal pop, like some of the best pop in all of baseball, the the way he can go oppo, like a right-handed hitter pulling the ball. Like it's, you can't teach that. I don't know how he does it. Sometimes I look at this guy's swing and it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Like where I would look at Mike Trout's swing, I'm like, oh yeah, that's, that makes a lot of sense to me. The way Shohei does things, just a little bit different, dude. And it's, it's incredible the amount of power this guy has. So I think he gets to that 350 homer mark without a doubt. 
the pitching side, I didn't even, that didn't even cross my mind. I couldn't even fathom those numbers. So you talk about that. <laughs> First, we were talking with Kevin Cash, the manager of the Rays, about, about Shohei when we were down the field last Wednesday. He was like, he's incredible. He's like, who else hits with like their ass out and like pops the bat? Because he is incredible. He was, he could not be in, have been more effusive with his praise. He loved managing him in the all-star game a year ago. He said everything about him is great other than when you have to face him. Yeah. As far as the pitching thing goes. So at the end of this year, let's say he gets a hundred more strikeouts or 120 more strikeouts or 150 more strikeouts. Let's make the math easy. Let's say by the end of the year, he has 400 career whiffs or something like that. Hell, I don't know. Let me see here. I should have brought his thing up. His, his baseball reference page. What do you want to uh, know? I got it up. How many career strikeouts does he have? Career strikeouts, he has 268. Okay, so let's say he gets to 400 by the end of the year. So he needs 1,100 more. So that basically means he needs about 180 over the next six seasons. That's a lot. I don't know if he's going to be able to do all that. Right? At some point, at some point he's going to stop that being only a pitcher, isn't he? I don't think so. That only put that only puts him at thirty three. But like this, that this and guy hit every day. He doesn't take any days know. off, dude. He we never know. gets a day we off. Know. You can't compare him to anyone because he's unlike anybody else we've ever seen. So I, I just, I, I won't put anything past this dude. And Cash is right. I was watching a swing against Montas. He had yesterday. It's the two run homer. I think in the first. Uh-huh. He gets out like. He's catching the heater out in front there. But then, like, at the last second, it's like he gets there and then kind of leans back as he swings to, like, to get behind the ball to stay through it a little bit more. It's just – I don't know how he does it, but what he does makes the ball go boom, Chris. Yeah. So, keep yeah. doing it. So, I guess my answer will be – yeah, I agree with you on the homers because I think he's going to stick around long enough. And it plays. We're playing the homer right here. God almighty, what a moonshot Dude, that, that is. that is a bomb. Now, the ball flies in Oakland during the day. It really does. But see how he goes back like that? Yes. Look at this. Catch out in front, but then he scoots back. Like his hips are going forward, but his torso is going back. It's like the power is getting delivered to the ball, but he's keeping his torso back so his hands have more like clearance to stay through it or something. I don't know. He's freaking awesome. He's so good. So the strikeouts, you know what? I'm going to go for it. I say he gets both. How amazing would that be if the dude gets more than 350 homers and more than 1,500 strikeouts? That's so badass. I'm just rooting for him to do everything. How many strikeouts does Babe Ruth have? We're looking it up now, people. All right. Uh, God. I'm getting it right now. No way, right? He got 488. I guess, you know, that wasn't a strikeout era. But <laughs> his most strikeouts <laughs> ever were 170 in 1916. He threw 323 innings to get that. 323 innings? Yeah, he got 100. Babe Ruth stinks as a pitcher. 323 innings and only 170 strikeouts. I'd rake you, Babe Ruth. Dude, what was his fifth? In that year, it was a 2-4-3. Ooh. Oh, wait, hold on one second. Hold on one second here. In 1916, 323 innings, he gave up zero home runs. This is not baseball. This is not baseball. He just kept the ball out of the middle of the plate. Yeah, dude. he did. Yeah, oof. <laughs> Imagine if no one could hit a homer. By the way, how fucked up is it that I just asked for Babe Ruth's FIP in 1916? <laughs> We got, we got a lot of good footage. Those those uh, stat nerds are combing through to make sure oh these uh, statistics are reliable. That's like a, they put defensive stats on these guys. It's like really, bro. I can't wait to see it on Brian Kenny's breakdown. He's gonna he's gonna talk oh, about Babe Ruth, got, Bip, and uh, why Giancarlo Stanton. Brian Kenny. Oh <laughs> why Giancarlo gosh. Stanton is bad for the Yankees. Listen, I'm friendly <laughs> with Brian. He's he and I have had a, a nice relationship. We're not best friends, but a nice relationship over the years. But there's times where he says stuff, and I'm like, what? So I haven't talked to him since that one, but I'll have to bring it up. 1917, 38 games started. Guess how many complete games? 
He probably 30. had like 27. 35. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's what they did back then. <laughs> Baseball. You know? But as, as who was it recently that said, yeah, but he was he was like striking out firefighters and postal carriers. <laughs> All right. Shout out thing. Babe Ruth. I respect you, but I mean, you can give us a fuck. He's been dead for like 70 he, years. He's like, you, he's like, Ploof, you he stink, give so shut up. Yeah. Um, how about the dude grabbing the rank raccoon at the Arkansas game? Would you ever even think of trying this? No, you know, I grew up in a family of pool men. So I was always in backyards, always messing around trash cans to throw the leaves away from the pool. I have had my fair share of run-ins with raccoons. They're not nice creatures. Like Pocahontas, the, the Disney movie, tried to make, you know, the raccoon, like, seem like some nice, like, you know, like, sidekick-type animal. It's not that way, especially mm-hmm. if there's little baby raccoons around. Those things are feisty, and all they want is your trash. And if you come near them, they're going to hiss at you. Like, I don't mess with raccoons whatsoever. So this dude, you know, it's a different world out there, I guess. Well, he's, he's a different animal. I wouldn't yeah. even know how to – isn't the raccoon so quick that you don't have the ability to pick it up? Like, how did he snag it by the back of his neck? And he's just – he's walking it, he's walking it out like, yes, I'm a bad yeah, motherfucker. Yeah, that's somebody that's trapped him before, for sure. He probably shoots squirrels and eats them off his porch or something. I don't know, man. Oh like, my shout God. out. Like, he grabbed him by the back of the neck, but, like – and at what point is a raccoon? Because at first it was a little squirrely, no pun intended. But and then after a while, it just was like, okay, you got me. So and then where where does he let him go? Where does he take know. him? I mean, it's I, still where was this again? A, it, Arkansas. <laughs> you know where they took him <laughs> straight to the freaking hot cold and barbecued that son of a no, gun. Stop! Don't say that. I will. I don't want to hear that today. I'm not going to listen. Well, you to don't that. think they eat? They don't think they eat raccoons. In the sticks? Of course what? they do. Of course they do. Raccoons, this is the University squirrels. of Arkansas. No, no, no. We're not eating that goddamn raccoon. Chris. Oh, God. You've now been in L.A. too long, day. man. You've been in L.A. You don't think in Ohio people, they eat raccoons in Ohio for sure. Oh, God. All right, stop. I'm done with this discussion. <laughs> I've had enough. Maybe we'll ask people when they join us on the AMP app if they've ever tried raccoon. Ugh, quickly, what do you have on John Boy Media? This turns sour so fast. Uh, I have the uh, Talking Baseball series recap. Monday episodes are my favorite, so I'm going to go do that with Jimmy and Jake and BBD right after this. Uh, I was planning on going down to the Dodger game tomorrow, but we'll have to talk about that, you and I. Yeah. Uh, see if we can do some content there. What do you got? Uh, latest episode of the Rose Rotation, out with Ty France, who had a huge weekend during the Mariners handing the Mets their first series loss. This weekend, we also caught him right after Jared Kelnick got sent down. Uh, We talked a little bit about that. Talked about Tony Gwynn being his uh, his coach at San Diego State and recruiting him when, you know, when he was 14 years old, what that was like. Uh, Great story about Ichiro still being around the team. Really, really good stuff. So nice kid uh, has a shot to play in the all star game, I believe, in his hometown of Los Angeles. Uh, so really one of the reasons if the Mariners are able to break that 21 year playoff drought, he's going to be at the forefront of this. Cause that dude can mash nice, nice kid on top of everything else. So that's what we got going. Uh, yeah, don't forget to go. I didn't know he was an LA guy. Yeah. Yeah. Played on the, uh, played travel ball with Lucas Giolito. Mm-hmm. So we talked a little bit about Lucas and, and stuff. And I got some stuff from Lucas about Ty. So it was good. Really good stuff. A lot of fun. All right, uh, don't forget to go snag your Shady Rays. Go get your deal. Go get your uh, sunglass on, as we like to say. Right There you go. You can look that cool. It is that simple. Uh, for our outstanding producer, Robbie Scirocco and T. Ploop, I'm Chris Rose. We'll see you Tuesday on Baseball Today.